Hi everyone, uh, this is the SIBA call for Tuesday, uh, January 22nd, 2019. Um, the only thing we have on this uh, agenda currently is to review uh, the SIBA next planning document. And um, I think um, if anyone else has agenda items, um, uh, feel free to let me know or to update the document. Um, I'd kind of like to do that before we get the meeting started, but um, right now is fine too. Um, to jump into that, um, there's been a document that I emailed out um, earlier today that describes um, sort of what's going on. Um, ba basically, uh, we have a, a little bit of a delay in um, sort of the, the core SIBA functionality because um, we have uh, some other resources and uh, or other resources being used to help work out um, the MWC demo, at least the ONF uh, side of things. Um, and then uh, Onus and Volta both have uh, a bunch of transition um, going on. Uh, I think um, if Saro is there, he might be able to speak to this more. Yes, uh, <clears throat> so the idea with uh, Onus and Volta is that um, currently it lacks um, some key features uh, that are needed in SIBA, uh, namely what we call technology profiles and speed profiles. Um, so the Volta community is working towards uh, a number of uh, uh, changes over the next uh, couple of months. Um, the, the big thing that's happened in Volta is that the 2.0 core uh, of Volta, which is based on Go, uh, Lang, uh, that's coming. Um, and uh, it is currently being integrated, not bound with the um, uh, with the open flow agent. And on the southbound, its uh, work is going to start on containerizing um, the open OLT adapter and the open OMCI uh, ONU adapter. So that's one train that's happening. Uh, that work, the initial work for that, is expected to be completed by March. But in parallel, there is a smaller brigade that's starting up um, in the Volta community for uh, completing the tech profile and speed profile work in the existing uh, adapters and the existing uh, core um, of Volta. So the expectation is that uh, by the end of February, uh, we, we should at least have that part complete, the, the brigade work complete, uh, that will allow uh, SIBA um, to start preparing for these new features uh, beyond February. Um, and in parallel, the, the work for containerizing adapters uh, and the new code core uh, will also be happening at targeted end of March. So if all goes well, we should have tech and speed profile implemented by uh, the end of February. So SIBA can um, start integrating that in, in, into the rest of SIBA. Uh, and then by the end of March, we would have that in the new uh, Go core, possibly with the new Go adapters. Um, and so SIBA will be ready to then incorporate the new Volta core um, by the end of March. Thanks, Saraf. Um I realize we didn't have a whole lot of time before this meeting to talk about um, this uh, this time frame and uh, and sequence of events. Um, are there any other uh, comments from the community? So the plan is that by the uh, we have some time on the SIBA level between now and February, uh, we have. Uh, time to look at other parts of the platform and uh, improve them. Um, so these are things that uh, um, uh, Zach will go through in a bit um, while, while the Volta community is working in these two parallel tracks of uh, the brigade working on tech and speed profiles and the larger community working on uh, the containerization of the adapters. Okay, yeah, to speak to the specific plan we have for January and February, um, we have, uh, at least the ONF side has a bunch of people that are moving 
um, doing a bunch of M cord work. I'm bringing that up with the current platform and hopefully making it so that it integrates um, with the other cord and um, SIBA components um, and uses the current versions um, so that those don't get left behind. Um, there's also a lot of work going in to make improvements to XOS. Um, we've sort of kicked the can down the road on, on database migration and service upgrades. Um, and so we're gonna take this time to uh, try to address those in a, in a way that is um, more work, should be um, helpful going forward in the future. Uh, specifically, um, those database migration service upgrades are intended to help us run a long running pod, upgrading components within it, and verify that things continue to work, which is an important uh, milestone for Receiva. Um, then we're going to spend a lot of time working on testing. Um, we have some scale tests um, and uh, other um, other testing that to help um, developers and help um, uh, in, do integration. Um, and then um, after that, there's a bunch of uh, work to uh, improve other features. For example, BBSIM has some improvements that we were we wanted to perform in that. Um, Trellis had some extra features that um, we had initially intended to get into 1.0, but I think fell through the cracks or didn't get done. And those are we're going to work on those. That's lag and LACP. Um, and then various things um, as it's as there are, uh, as we're planning to have a few new developers come on um, with a new partner efforts um, that there's a bunch of uh, effort going into uh, making it easy to for new developers to come on board and to understand the testing and other other documentation and other infrastructure tasks. So that's sort of the plan um, from. From the ONF side of things, um, are there other? If anyone else has things to add, um. I have a question. Is a second. So, is that, is that be a need for um, synchronizer for LAG and LACP? I had a real difficult time understanding, sir. Excuse me, I couldn't hear you. So we couldn't hear, at least in Menlo Park, we could not hear you very clearly, your question. Oh, okay. I, uh, I'll repeat. I, do, you, do you hear me well right now? Yes. Okay, so uh, I wonder if there will be a need for a synchronizer uh, to, for, for LAG and LACP. Uh, how, how, I wonder how can we configure or there will be a need for, uh, to configure LAG and LACP. Yes, I think there will be changes required to the existing, uh, what we call the fabric synchronizer. Um, so it's not really been designed yet, but uh, uh, once uh, we're really waiting for the feature to complete uh, uh, in, in, in the switch itself and the ONOS apps that control the switch. Uh, and once that is complete, then there will be a change to the fabric synchronizer. Hi, Zach. This is Srinu uh, <clears throat> here. Uh, a couple of questions. Uh, first, first thing is, I mean, is, is in the definition of uh, the, the SEBA and the staff. So why would the M code come under SEBA? I mean, just, <laughs> that's just my question. Yeah, I can answer that. Uh, it's, it's technically not under SEBA. Uh, it's a separate profile. So if you, uh, Zach, if you scroll up, um, you can see the overarching goals uh, so we, we regard SIPA as a profile that runs on the core platform, and Encore is another profile uh, that runs on the core platform. As you know, the core platform has gone through significant changes uh, over the last half year, mm -hmm. and what we want to do is we want to be able to prove to ourselves that you can run, in fact, multiple profiles on the same platform. Just like, we, uh, just like in SIPA, we want to eventually prove to ourselves that we can run uh, multiple workflows not at the same time, but have the capability of having different workflows run on the same SIPA profile. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got the idea, but uh, just listing it under SEBA just a little bit of con confused me now. Yeah, the, 
Yeah, that part is a little bit confusing, but the fact that we wanted to convey is that we have this time between now and mid-February, sorry, or mid to late February, where SIBA uh, itself is, is waiting for uh, Volta and Onas to come up with these new features. Mm -hmm. So we have this gap. The, the two main things that we wanted to focus on uh, was uh, the fact that you know, other parts of SIBA uh, needs uh, improvement and investigation. So that's listed. And the second thing we have is that we do have MWC coming up. So this is a good opportunity for part of the SIBA team to focus on getting the NCOD profile onto the new CORD platform. All right, perfect. Yeah. Right. I mean, just, yeah. So it, not yeah. something that the SIBA team will continue on a long term basis, but mm -hmm. it's really uh, more like proving to ourselves that you know we can run multiple profiles on the new. Uh, new platform, and we have this window of opportunity between now and the end of February, yeah. where uh, we have a little breathing room, so to speak, because the new features that we want to get into SIBA are still coming into Volta and on us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, thanks, Sauro. Uh, another related question, like the, the license issues with MCOD, are they resolved or uh, with the... With the... Uh, I, I think they are on a path to getting results. They, as of today, they have not been. Um, okay. So the answer is no. Um, so the work that we will probably be doing for the demo is is not going to be with the open source license. Um, uh, so as a result, there will not be an official release, so to speak, okay. of this one, right? The right. release will include the, the ones which have the proper license. Okay. But that is still further down the road. All right. Um, just another question is related to the PCM improvements. So, uh, is there any plan to add, uh, I mean, right now it's a uh, control plane only, is there any plan to add data plane on top of it? Or the improvement is just for uh, supporting uh, more than 16 and multiple ONUs and uh, multiple OLTs? Yes, that's right. So I don't think there is any plan for adding data plane. That's really not the purpose of BBSIM. Uh, uh, it is it is it is a control plane only scale testing mechanism, um, and the improvements in BBSIM itself are so that the tool itself can scale. Otherwise, really, it can't really look at SIBA scale if, if the tool itself doesn't scale. So all um, work that we have for BBSIM improvements are really control plane only. We don't see the value in adding a data plane to it because, as you know, in SIPA, the data plane happens completely through hardware. And so, if you want to be able to do data plane, you're not really measuring, you're not really testing uh, SIPA scale if you're still doing the data plane in software because, in the reality, it's in hardware. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. And uh, so that. Uh, that's another, I mean, related question. Like, so, I mean, we know that PONSIM simulates a data plane, but uh, one of the advantage of BBSIM is it uses the same uh, op OpenOLT adapter. So, is there any plan to have PONSIM as well uh, move to OpenOLT adapter, or it will continue to use the, the PONSIM adapter? Why I am asking is like, if we are uh, like as part of the test brigade, like in future or sometime. If we come up with uh, a real scalability test case, I mean, with with data plane and everything, so having the same adapter maybe makes a difference. See, I don't understand the question. I mean, if you if if you want to simulate data planes, how do you do data plane scale without using hardware? Because the the, the, the traffic has uh, stays in hardware in the data plane, right? So how do you? No, no, no. The hardware will be the same. So what, yeah, what I'm trying is you can run multiple uh, simulated pawn sim OLTs and ONUs in your uh, compute nodes, which will uh, generate traffic, which goes through the fabric switch. Well, again, what goal are you trying to accomplish here? You're trying to uh, see if the, the, the aggregation switch, the fabric switch can and can scale, but it's all it's in an ASIC. It has line rate uh, capabilities, right? Yeah. 
So what are you trying to achieve by generating traffic out of data plane traffic out of uh, uh, out of one sim? So even, one sorry. simple way I want as, as a test uh, for the brigade I can say is like you can measure the um, so once 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 a uh, R code or once a customer joins how much time uh, it takes for him to get the traffic out or something like that for the scalability test. So it, it, I mean, the measuring out of uh, using the control plane logs is, I mean, maybe I think it's it's better to measure it based upon the traffic flows with yes, a complete end to end picture. This is one of the use cases I, I thought about, but. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we can reconsider it down the line. Right, right now I'm saying that we, we need to work hard to make the thing itself scale for the control plane only testing. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we get to the point where we want to include um, you know, scale testing for the data plane uh, again uh, so, so to, to add the data plane. Okay, we can reconsider that. But we have a lot of uh, work ahead of us just to be able to, you know, do uh, tens of OLTs and thousands of ONUs uh, just for the control plane. All right, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Sarov and Sriju. Um, if there aren't any other comments on this, um, I, th I don't think we have anything else for the meeting, so I'm going to um, end early. Um, any other comments? Uh, I have a question. Because in Anchorage, you know, there's a SIBA blueprint. Um, the target for release one is end of August. No, sorry, end of April. No, August, April. So, do you think um, is there any uh, blocker here in SIBA? Um, we we can reach that date, or everything is okay. Well, SIBA has already had uh, one release. Uh, uh, that was in the first week of January. Uh, and in principle, if you want, if you want to see how Acrino, uh can work with SIVA, that first release of SIVA is already ready. So that's not a blocking item. Um, is it fully feature complete? No, it is not. But it is. It should be enough. It, it's feature full enough to to pursue a Crano integration. Am I making sense? So, are you suggesting we use the previous version, not the current ongoing version for SIBA blueprint in Equino? That would be my recommendation. Okay, got it. Thank you. To add on to that, the fundamental platform parts that um, SIBA is using are not forecasted to change other than maybe version bumps. Um, it's all of SIBA is running on Kubernetes, and that's it doesn't have a whole lot of other requirements other than I, I think uh, we might have some uh, hardware requirements um, that uh, could be spelled out in a bomb. Probably need to think through persistent storage. Um, I, I mean, that's the only other thing, and it's really not so much a blueprint thing as much as a get Kubernetes to hand out persistent storage to Kafka's and etcds and whoever else. But um, just something else to keep in mind. That's a good point. Um, we didn't speak to that in this in this document. Um, I can. Uh, it, it would be very useful, Matt, to go through and talk about what is needed to persist. Um, yeah. No, I'm not sure exactly everything. I just know that you know there are. Those pieces around that we've kind of skipped over, the Kafka especially, but I'm sure Postgres as well would be better served by uh, a persistent claim. <laughs> but yeah, it's probably worth auditing everything and kind of going through and making sure that we at least have a list of stuff we know needs it. And then as part of a future release, having it asked for in the environment. And then as long as the Kubernetes can provide that, whomever sets up the Kubernetes regardless, as long as it can provide it, we should be fine. Yeah, the SIBA blueprint doesn't actually call out like etcd in the edge application and API uh, block. They have uh, storage as Ceph. Um, 
down in the edge maybe platform think, somewhere. But yeah, yeah. I, I, it may be a bad example. I do know that Kafka, though, we, we kind of jump over the persistent claim, and it would be better if, if we at least either accounted for it or had some, even like SCD operator, for example, has the notion of backups. If there was some way it could generate backups and then commit that to persistent storage, then, you know, it, we'd be better off. Just a general subject item, really. Nothing okay. specific about it. I, I think you're getting at a, at a really important operational um, process that we need to address, but is not specifically addressed currently. Um, it, I, I can start making up a document describing sort of what those uh, platform level uh, sort of requirements are going to be. We, I don't think we really spelled them out um, beyond saying that there should be some sort of persistent storage and we have been not paying much attention to that in development as most of the development act environments get set up and then thrown away. Um, one of the one of the point of some of the testing we're trying to do is to keep a pod running for a long time. That's partially the ISSU. Um, the the reason why we're pursuing the ISSU, it's so that we can have a long running pod. We can see what breaks as we upgrade versions, and that uh, we're assuming then that they those the data is being uh, stored persistently and will be version n will, plus one will read version n's data. I agree. The long-running pod is probably number one on the the list, but uh, but yeah, I think it, it, the, the time to uh, embrace persistent storage is probably upon us. Um, the only other comment I had is just kind of a housekeeping one, really. I know there's been a few Jenkins jobs that have been failing recently, and I wasn't sure if that was being looked at or not. Volta specifically. We have been looking at a lot of the Jenkins jobs. Um, there's been some issues with um, uh, some of the uh, connectivity between the machines that are running those jobs and the Jenkins instance. Um, so not all of them are indicative of uh, code failure. Some of them are indicative of infrastructure failure. Um, we, I think we're working on improving that, but um, we have uh, where we're actually performing some of these tests um, has been less reliable than we would have hoped. Okay, that's uh, that's fine. It's just really kind of a don't wanted to hold up any commits if uh, it's not a code problem. Right. Right. Yeah, the only other thing that's going on is I know here at the Foundry, we've uh, done some work to make sure that Volta Master, the 1.x Python core Volta Master as it is today, um, trying to keep it running in uh, SIVA 1x, if you will. Um, and I think there's a commit that went in last week that uh, should allow that to work. Um, but, uh, but yeah, really kind of what we've been focused on is kind of maintaining the, the making sure that Volta Master functionally and SIVA functionally still maintain what was released with 1.0 with Volta Master. That's great, man. Thanks. Okay. Um, thank you, Matt. Um, I, if there's nothing else, I'm going to call the meeting. And um, if other people have uh, things they'd like to add, um, I, we, this is sort of a a fairly tactical plan that's um, very um, sort of time limited because of we're waiting on this on the um, Onus and Volta support. Um, so uh, I think we probably have room to make a longer term plan, um, sort of what we'd want to have in a 2.0 or a 1.1 or, or what have you. Um, and that hasn't been well spelled out yet. Um, how we want to do that, I think, is to be determined. I think maybe we should take that onto the mailing list or make some other um, uh, use some other means of making the decision Prakash, rather than reply during the meeting. Prakash, can you hear me, Prakash? Here. Yes, Prakash. Yeah, uh, Tina mentioned something about Ecreno. Can we add that here, Ecreno integration or something? line item so that we can follow up on that? I, I think that's worth pursuing. Um, I'm not exactly sure what um, the Ecrano deployment would entail yet. Um, 
um, since today we have already elected Aaron from AT&T as a PTL of a uh, CIBA blueprint. So uh, I assume uh, we kick off starting the development and integration there. Well, the development was just, just no development, it's just integration and grab uh, uh, what the last release of SIBA here to integrate into the network cloud uh, general architecture. Okay, thanks, Tina. I'll um, if if Aaron could uh, get a hold of me or or post on the mailing list um, just so we can get that start that integration started, that would be great. What's the exact speaking? Can you send uh, yeah, me an email? I, did I break up there? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, if if Aaron. So is it there, Zach? Real quick, is it there already in the Crano working group? There is. I don't know that Owen is, is, is and, and engaged. Been. Really, this wouldn't be the place I would expect to talk about a crano. Right. I, I think. I think the point is that um, I, I'm not entirely sure what um, an acrino blueprint looks like and entails. Um, I, I'm sure that we have people on on the call who have a better idea of that. Um, but well, figuring I out. I know, how and, but. I mean, AT&T AT has a group working on specifically SIBA a blueprint for a crano. Um, we're only advisors, Matt and I, we're helping them get that together, but there's a whole different project. Okay. With different, different people, different sure. organization and labs running it. Yeah, and uh, the real question is, is who's doing the work? Because somebody who knows a crano is going to have to pick up the helm charts for SIBO or somebody who knows the helm charts for SIBO is going to have to take up a crano. But either way, somebody's got to actually do the put them together work. Well, but, and I think that, that they're working that through with the other vendor and everything else. But I can't imagine any of the helm SIBO stuff, so helm SIBO Vulcan stuff would have to change fundamentally for a crano. It should be, crano should accommodate the yeah. helm charts that have already been established. Yeah, that, that is their plan. Right. They, so, they want it to be as little work as possible. Right. So it sounds like somebody just needs to go try it and start building I'm, like I'm officially the liaison to the, the okay. team and Candon's group. I mean that this but but it's but they not have working on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like our whole actually working funded on it. proof of concept, okay. everything. Technical people working on it. Tech, uh, well, we've hired is there a separate meeting for that? Is there a separate meeting for that? And can you tell us when, where? Uh I know of the internal AT and T one, so you wouldn't get an invite to that. Anyway, um, okay. So, but I'm. I mean, I'm not. Up, does does the Ukraino uh, have a public call regarding the SIBA blueprint? Um, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a working group for Ukraino. I just I'm not part of that. I'm just for the internal proof of concept. I'm the one that they're going to come to and say what Helm charts do we run in what order and everything else. But okay. So I think uh, I think myself. Uh, and Tina both are interested. Can you connect us to Kandan maybe? Or can we connect to Kandan directly to find out if we can participate in any public forum we have? Okay, so guys, you go to the wiki, uh, go to the approve uh, blueprints, go to network cloud uh, blueprint family and go to SIBA. There's a wiki page and we will start the uh, uh, project meeting soon. And Aaron is the newly elected um, PTL by today. Uh, I mean, I, I can I can make the inquiry. It's just that we're not part of that project, uh, other than we're going to help them with with what happens to happen in what order. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, um, just, but, because I'm the I'm the TSC co-chair, I, I know all the information. I'm just sharing the information here, and um, because the 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 work is just kick off. So um, there is a mailing list called blueprint at list at list at the acrina the arc. If you put the hashtag SIBA there, uh, we can discuss over the mailing list. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just saying that this isn't the group to to really discuss that. We're we've got a big pile on our plate. So none of us here are tasked to chase chase, chase down the testing and integration work. Insofar as saying here are the helm charts, they need to run the same way. But, but I mean, there is a. This is I mean, ATT is not being secretive about a crane or anything. We're we're working it. 
it's just not us. Foundry us, yes. Well, I mean, I don't. Sorry if you're not really engaged in the the Crano stuff, are you? Not yet. I think Sean has been. Uh, um, Sean had organized some calls last year uh, in December when uh, the blueprint was uh, going through the Crano TST um, for for acceptance. But uh, we have not had any calls this year. And that's why I was asking, are there any public calls in the Ukraine community for SIPA? Yeah. I'm certain there are. Uh, I mean, I know, I mean, I, I don't know. There's a proof of concept <laughs> where we're going to provide, there's a orchestration company that's going to build out the Ukraine environment, you know, starting with Maz, you know, start bare metal, build out, build out Kubernetes, build out the uh, Helm FIBA and Volta and everything else based on the Helm chart that that Matt and some of the others at, at O and F have 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 honed to be a, a very clean install. But the, the the project, the proof of concept is on the the actual orchestration, kind of the push button, you know, go from a pile of hardware to a functioning SIBA platform. Right? That's the project. Um, and it will include a Crano blueprints and everything else. And I mean, I'm, I, I understand and, and I'm part of the project in that I'm a liaison to the, the Helm charts, but that's, I mean, there's a bunch, there's more people working on that than from at and than are our working actual code from for SIBO or Volta. So I, I'm not going to commit any resources other than pointing them to the right place in Helm. Does that make sense? Right, it does. They they usually have bigger budgets than we do anyway. But yeah, I, I know that it, it is being done in in the in the daylight. So I guess being apprised of what's going on, sure, it'd be good to know. But we're not saying we're going to go and do hands-on integration work. No, so. no, no. Okay. No, I mean they're, they're paying somebody. Got people to do that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they've got contracts and everything else. So. so, Tina, perhaps you could find out if there is a public Ukraine call um, for the SIBA blueprint, and it would be good to let us know. Yes. Um, so, the public course will be appearing in the wiki page. Uh, if it's there, I will put it to you in the next SIBA uh, meeting. And that's called meeting. Okay. Thank you. So, any other questions uh, on our rough timeline till the end of February that we have outlined in this this uh, uh, in this call? Uh, makes sense to us. Um, yeah. Seems reasonable. Straightforward. So, is there any um, idea in terms of the other the other workflows that are going to be implemented? Or, um, is there like a set of features around that? Or that's a good point. Uh, the the workflow that we have from Turk Telecom, um, it's um, the discussion on that stored. Um, after one or two discussions that we had, the hope was that it would get submitted uh, publicly uh, um, to the place where we have all the documents and Google Docs for, um, for workflows and other design ideas. But uh, I have been meaning to follow up with Dr. to to see if that can get submitted. Um, but I haven't had the opportunity to do that. If Mesut is on the call, then Perhaps we can ask now. Uh, it's likely not on the call. So that's an action item on my uh, plate to, to see where we are with that, uh, uh, with that workflow. So I can bring that up uh, in my call as well. I'll take that as an action item. Thank you. 
Any other questions? Okay. Um, I think that's going to be it then. Um, thank you all for uh, joining this meeting, and uh, we'll meet next week. Bye, all. Thank you. Bye, thanks.